What makes an exponential function different from a polynomial function? Both of them have exponents, but the difference is what is the exponent? In a polynomial, the exponents are numbers, right? X squared, X cubed, X to the fifth, so forth and so on. In an exponential function, your exponent is the variable. Okay, your exponent could be X or it's going to be Y. Usually it's X. Okay, now I know A and B are variables, but in this case, A and B are numbers. Okay, A is non-zero. Okay, it's any number other than zero. If it were zero, then we wouldn't have the equation. B is positive, okay? We want that base to be positive and not equal to 1, because we're thinking about that too. We're raising 1 to a power, or 1 to a weird one, right? 1 to any power is still 1. We wouldn't have a function there, okay? Um, it would just be a constant function. Uh, we call A the initial value of the function, okay? And the initial value is for any function. The value when x equals 0. So when x is 0, b equals 0 is 1, because that's why a is always the initial value. b is what we call the base. <coughs> the domain of an exponential function is all our numbers. Okay? We can raise any number, any b right here, to any possible number, negative, positive, fraction, decimal, it doesn't matter. You can raise it to any number and you've got a range. So the domain is all your numbers. <coughs> our range is not all our numbers, but we'll talk about that um, in a little bit, about the range. That'll vary. So first of all, let's make sure that we can tell the difference between exponential and non-exponential functions. Um, and if it is a exponential, we need to identify some pieces about it. Okay, so the first example we have here is that the function is equal to 3 to the x. That is exponential because the exponent is x, the base is a number. Um, so it is the initial value, a. Well, this one <clears throat> doesn't have a number times the base. So if there's no number there, remember it's equal to 1. So a, the initial value, is 1. Or you could look at it as when you plug in 0, what do you get? 3 to the 0 is 1. Uh, and, of course, our base is 3. All right. Uh, B, g of x is equal to 6 times x to the negative 4. That is not exponential. What type of function is that? Hmm. It's not a polynomial either. How can we rewrite that? How do we get rid of the negative exponents? We move them to the bottom, right? What type of function is that? Rational. When there is a variable in the denominator, it is a rational function. Okay. C is exponential. Bless you. Our initial value is negative 2, the constant in the front. The base is 1.5. And while we're at this point, let me mention something, because it always happens, okay? You cannot multiply negative 2 times 1.5, because 1.5 has an exponent. Exponents come before multiplication in the order of operations. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication is the reason. So, um, you would have to raise 1.5 to the power first, and then multiply the result by negative 2. Okay? So, that is not equal to negative 3 to the x. Okay? Um, D is an exponential, but it's a little bit different because, look, the exponent is negative x. So this is what you have to do if that exponent is negative x. You need to manipulate this a little bit to figure out um, what our power is, or excuse me, what our base is. Let's decompose that exponent, and what I mean by that is we can rewrite that as 2 to the negative 1 raised to the x. Because properties of exponents say when you raise a power to another power, you multiply, right? So negative 1 times x is negative x. 
But I'm mighty about this, so that exponential always can be positive at zero, that kind of thing. So, 2 to the negative 1, how do we rewrite that? That is equal to, it's not negative 2, it's 1 half. Get rid of negative exponents by moving. Okay, so our initial value, A, is 7. We could have determined that from the very, from the very beginning. Okay, but our base is not 2, the base is actually 1 half. <coughs> the base is actually 1 half. And how about that last one? Is that an exponential? No. Okay, pi looks like a variable, but we know pi is actually a number. Okay, um, that's actually a constant function. So you've got 5 times 6 raised to pi, 6 raised to the pi, some number, okay, times 5 is some other number, that's a constant function. It doesn't look like a constant function, but if you type that into your y equals, it's going to give you a horizontal line. You probably won't see it because 6 raised to the pi is bigger than 6 cubed. 6 cubed is 2 16. Yeah, 6 cubed is 2 16, and then multiplying by 5. So you're talking about like a thousand, over a thousand, okay. So it's going to be outside of your window if you just try to graph it. But if you zoomed out, you would see a horizontal line. Okay. So if our function is defined as 2 to the x, very simple, basic exponential function, let's find these values for that without using our calculator. Okay, we're going to use our minds for once. Okay. So f of 4 means we're plugging in 4 for our x. So 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 and 16. Okay. Or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. 16. Uh, f of 0, 2 to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. 2 to the negative 3rd. Okay. We just talked about this. Negative exponents, we get rid of them by moving that to the denominator. So that's 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8. What about the 1 half? What do those fractional exponents stand for? Square root. Power over root. 2 to the first, and you're taking the square root of it. Now, no, I'm not expecting you to tell me what's the square root of 2 without using your calculator. But I did want you to recognize 2 to the 1 half is the square root of 2. So similarly, let's do <coughs> the uh, f of negative 3 over 2. Okay, Get rid of the negative first. And the 3 halves power is the square root of 2 cubed. That would be nice if 2 was a perfect square. It is not. So we just need to write that as the square root of 8, and <clears throat> we're not supposed to leave radicals in the denominator, are we? So we've got to rationalize. i use all those skills. And then the square root of 8 simplifies. 8 can be rewritten as 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2. And write that as the square root of 2 over 2. A lot of work went into that one. But nothing you shouldn't be able to do, correct? You just don't find any time on this radical function. I'd hope so. Alright. Let's keep going. What if I give you a table of values and I ask you to figure out uh, what is the equation for this exponential function? Okay, I tell you that it's exponential. Um, let's figure out the equation. <clears throat> so, our initial value. How do we find the initial value if we're looking at, I've got two different functions here, okay? The first one is g of x, the second one is h of x. So for g of x, how do we find our initial value? We're looking for what? Make your definition back at the beginning, the initial value. Yes, it's A, but if we're looking at a table where X is 0, 4 is our initial value. Now, the base, B, 
B is what you're multiplying by every time. Okay, the base B is what you're multiplying by every time to get the next term. Now, we can do that in this case because notice the x value here increased by 1 every time. Okay, so we're just taking the step of 1 every time. Well, what does it look like the next time the y value is back? 3. Okay, maybe a little unfamiliar to do with the fraction, but once you get to this point, it's pretty clear that you're multiplying by 3. So our base is 3 because we are multiplying by 3 to get the next term every time. Now, you could have also, if you figure that out, if it wasn't very clear, um, you could take a term, say, for example, 12, and divide it by the previous term, 4, and that's going to give you the base as well. So, the formula for g of x should be 4 times 3 raised to the x. And again, that is not the same as 12 to the x. Okay, so let's do h of x the same way. The initial value, we're looking for what's the value when x is 0, it's 8. What are we multiplying by every time? 1 fourth. Very good. Okay, um, it may be a little clear to go backwards and see that if you go backwards, you're multiplying by 4. So if you're going um, from left to right in terms of your x values, then you're multiplying by one fourth to get the next term. So our equation for h of x should be eight. And for whatever reason, we tend to put uh, to put fractional bases in parentheses, just because it makes it more clear that the x is on the entire thing. It's not just one raised to the x or something like that. So that's just kind of convention there. All right. Pretty simple so far. Let's talk about exponential growth versus exponential decay. Okay. <coughs> um, if your initial value is greater than zero and your base is greater than one, then the function is increasing and we call that exponential growth. And the base B is its growth factor. And the base B is its growth factor. Similarly, if B is less than 1, okay, it's still positive, but it's a number less than 1. So be careful to not just say a fraction, okay? Because 3 halves is a fraction, but 3 halves is greater than 1. Three, if 3 halves is your base, you've still got exponential growth. Um, so don't just say that if the base is a fraction, then you have exponential decay. If your base is a fraction less than 1, you have exponential decay. And then that is its decay factor. Okay, so let's explore that a little bit. If you flip your paper over, <coughs> you will see um, there are... Um, nine functions here. Uh, the first four have bases 2, 3, 4, and 5. The next four have the reciprocal bases. And then the last one is, is a different kind of function. It's still exponential. It's e to the x. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to graph all of those, not all at the same time, okay? Um, in the window, right now, hit window, and you need to change your uh, x values and your, your x minimums and uh, y minimums and stuff. Okay, I want you to graph it in the window from negative 2 to 2 for the x values and from negative 1 to 6 for the y values. That's what your window should be. It's not, I don't want a squared negative 10 by 10 window. Um, your window should look like this and I want you to graph these functions and I want you to fill in that table right there. Um, 